Hi, and welcome to Trex Academy, where you can learn everything you need to know about building your deck project. I'm Devin, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install our joist. So our first step is to crown our joist. But what exactly is the crown of a joist? So the crown is gonna be a natural arc, and we just wanna make sure that we're installing those up. So to find that, I'm just gonna sight down the side of my joist, and I can see that I have that arc pointing up right now, which is perfect. I'll just go ahead and make a mark. Again, making sure the crown is up, because as I install them, I need all of my crowns to be up. If I weren't to do this, or if I were to skip this step, and we install the crown up, crown down, what you could end up with is a wavy deck surface as you start to install those deck boards. So I'm just gonna continue doing this process. Looking down, this looks pretty good. It's pretty straight, but I'm still gonna make a mark just to remind myself that I've already inspected that joist. With our joist crown, now we're ready to install our first rim joist. Just gonna slide it into place, making sure that that rim joist is flush with the top of that ledger flashing. I've also already tacked in two three inch timber screws, so I'm just gonna drive those into that ledger board. That'll be the first part of our connection. Okay, the second part of that rim joist to ledger board connection is gonna be a seven inch L bracket. In this case, we have an L70. So we'll be connecting these using inch and a half SD connector screws, which I have right here. Let's go ahead and start by attaching it to our ledger board. With this critical connection made, now we're ready to move on to our hurricane ties. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is clamp my joist in place just to make sure it doesn't fall off the beam. Because I'm working alone, I'm just gonna use this clamp. And it is important to make sure that your joist is flush with your beam. And, all right, there we go, good shape. So now we're ready to install that hurricane tie. But what exactly is the purpose of the hurricane tie? So this is a really important connection. In fact, it's a critical connection of your joist to your beams. Without this connection, you have a real risk of a high wind or even an earthquake causing uplift to the deck. So that's why it's really important to make sure we have this connection. So we'll start by installing it to our joist first. There we go. Okay, there we go. And again, now you can start to see how it's gonna make that critical connection from joist to our beam. After I get this one done, I'll just do the same thing on any intersection where I have a joist with a beam. So we've got that rim joist installed. And the next thing you would typically see most tradesmen do is now install the rest of the joist the length of the deck. Then they would come back and start installing their blocking. There's nothing wrong with that way. In fact, they've probably been doing that effectively for years. But as a DIYer, you might find it a little bit difficult to be stepping over all of those joists and to be stuck in the middle of the bays and trying to attach your blocking. So instead, what we're gonna be doing is we'll be installing the blocking as we work forward. So I've got my first piece of blocking here and you can see that as we cut it, we're always treating those edges with that wood preservative. So let's go ahead and set it in place. We're gonna have that flush with the outside of our beam and then I'm gonna pull up my square just to make sure that it's straight up and down. Okay, I'll make a mark here just to make sure that I don't go past that as I'm trying to fasten it. All right, it's also important to note that these blocks are required by code. And the main benefit of that is that it'll stop the joist from rolling or twisting once these are installed. So I've already got two of my three inch timber screws preset on the side. Now I'm ready to fasten them. All right, here we go, got our first block in. So from here, I'll repeat the same process over the top of my next beam, and then I'll be moving on to install the next joist. So you might think at this step that you would now just be installing all of those joist hangers down the length of our ledger board. And if all two by eights were the exact same width, that wouldn't be a problem. But unfortunately, they're not. And I've actually got a little example here. So what we're looking at is two two by eight cutaways. 
So you can see we actually have some height variation between the two. But the crazy thing about it is both of these 2x8s were from the same supplier on the same bundle of material and they were shipped to us on the same day. And yet we still have that variation between materials. I think you kind of see where I'm going with this. If we installed all the joist hangers, the height of the bottom of those joist hangers would be set equal. And as we install different height joists or different width joists, what you're going to see is a variation in the height. Just like we kind of talked a little bit before uh, when we were crowning our joist, making sure that crown was up so that we didn't have the wavy deck surface or see those undulations as you look down it. Same thing here. That would basically be a waste of time if we were to now install all the joist hangers. Let's go ahead and pull in the next joist here. Just gonna be making sure that it's lined up with the lines that I have on my ledger board. That'll make sure that I'm square to get started. And it's really important to note that you need to make sure the top of your joist is gonna be flush with the top of that ledger flashing. So I'll have that all flush here. And uh, a nice little tip if you happen to be working alone or maybe you don't have a deck project like we have here where I have two beams so you can see that my joist is resting on it fully right now. It makes it really easy to work alone on a project like this. But if you don't have a similar project, maybe you have one beam or a flush beam. If your deck looks like that, it could be really difficult to work alone. So what you'll do is just take these uh, L70s, which you probably already have on hand. You can just attach those temporarily to the top of your joist. Could even be on both sides if you have your rim joist in. Again, maybe you have a flush beam. So we'll attach those and then you would just leave some overhang on the far end. Now you'd be able to bring it in and set that right on top of the ledger flashing. So it does two things. Not only does it make sure that it's gonna stay flush, but it's also supporting the weight of it, which is great if you're working alone. So now we're gonna install this hanger. This is a joist hanger, first time we've seen it here. So this one specifically is an LUS 28Z. And that 28 is because we're working with two, eight, two by eight material. Let's go ahead and get this squared up here just to start. And then we'll install the joist hanger by slamming it up against the bottom. Really important to keep that joist hanger tight with the bottom of our joist. Once I have it in position here, I've got my impact and then I'll be using those inch and a half SD connectors that we've used for our hurricane ties. Continue using those. I'm gonna start by securing it at the, uh, the top right here on my joist hanger. And then I'll be using the same connector to connect this joist hanger to the wall. And now what I'll do is just make sure I wrap it around, really clamp it. Again, bottom needs to be secure to the bottom of our joist. Make sure that it wraps all the way around and connect it to our ledger. Once I get all of these in place, I'll come back with our two and a half inch SD connector screws. Those will go through these joist hangers into the joist and connect that all together into our ledger board. It's important to double check because obviously I can't see my line now. So I can just pull out a square or if you don't have a square and you have a level, either one could work well. I think in this case, I'll go with the level so I know that it's really accurate. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and finish connecting this and then we'll move on down the joist. Let's start moving down the length of our joist here. We're gonna stop at this next beam because we need to make sure that our joist is connected or secured to that blocking. So we obviously already have it done from the outside of the rim joist and we're just using that same process. We've got our two screws. These are gonna be the three inch timber screws that we've been using already. We need to secure them two inches down from the top and two inches up from the bottom. A couple other things that I'm checking for while I'm doing this. Need to maintain that it's gonna be flush with our beam. And then also, I wanna make sure that it's straight up and down. So you can just bring that square in, or if you have a longer square, you could extend it all the way down and that would double check both at the same time. Looking good right there. And finally, I need to make sure that the top of my blocking doesn't come up above my joist. Again, same thing as we've talked about before. The deck board would end up resting on top of this and be raised a little bit in areas where that happens. Okay, so let's go ahead and secure this. Starting two inches down from the top. I'm gonna get it set first. Okay, now I'll hold it down in position. Okay, do the same thing at the bottom. So you can already see it's starting to hold a little bit straighter there. So now I'm gonna show you the two different options we have as far as hurricane ties go. 
So we've got this one here, which you've already seen us use for our rim joist to secure that to the beam. We've got another option here, and this is the one we'll be using as much as we can down the length of our beams. I think this is really great for DIYers because as you can see, to install it, all we need to do is slide that right up, slide it against the back, and it can hold itself just like that. So then we're going back to those inch and a half connector screws that we're using. I'm gonna start by connecting it to my beam. So we've got that hurricane tie installed. Now we're gonna move on to continue installing the blocking. But I do wanna point out that as we're installing this, we're actually gonna be staggering that from bay to bay. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I've got this piece of blocking here and that's actually set flush with the outside of my beam. And then on the next bay, I just wanna make sure that I'm flushed up with the, uh, the inside or the backside. So that way, as I'm securing all of my joists to the blocking, you can see I had pretty easy access here, but if I were to install them in a straight line, now you can see I'd actually have to come in at an angle to make that connection. It is just a little bit easier to rest it on the other side of our beam and then secure it from the other side. I'll go ahead and get this secured. Just following the same process as I've done with my blocking so far. Just making sure that I'm flush. And then I don't have to make sure that I'm level just yet. I'll actually go ahead and secure the bottom fastener. And now I can check for square, or plumb rather. Okay, right there looks good. Okay, the block is in position. Next thing I'll do is move up to the next beam and just continue this process all over again. I'll be installing the hurricane ties, which I think this could be a good time to mention that the two options that we've showed, either one is just fine and code approved. Remember, code approved is the most important thing. So as we're installing these, there may be some times that we either run into some bolts or we even have some framing here. And if you need to, it's totally fine to move to the back of the beam or maybe even to use the, uh, the other type of hurricane tie that we have. So just so you know, you can do that and we'll be doing it in the project. So with this secured, I'm gonna go ahead and move up to that next beam, get the hurricane tie, install my blocking. Then I'm just repeating that process all the way across the deck for every joist. All right, so you can tell I've made some great progress so far. I'm just at the halfway point installing these breaker board support joists. Thought this would be a great time to stop and kind of talk through that process. So remember earlier we had the layout on our joist of this whole breaker board configuration. Now you actually get to see it in real life, 3D, and I'll show you exactly how this is gonna support the breaker board and the ends of the deck board that intersect it. So now you can see it's fully supported on both the left and right side. And then as the deck boards intersect it right here, now the ends of our deck boards are fully supported as well. Now that I've given you a little bit better understanding, I'm just gonna keep on working through the whole process adding in our blocking, installing our hurricane ties. And I think this is a great time to also add that this is why I work on each joist individually. If I would have tried to install all of the hardware first, I'd have a lot of trouble working my way in here, making sure that all my hurricane ties are installed. Just keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get to work and install my next hurricane tie. So now we're ready to move on to the front of our deck frame. You can see we have all of our joists running long, and so now we're gonna be trimming them back to our planned cantilever. After we do that, we'll finally be ready to install the front rim joist. Okay, so I'm gonna start by setting my tape measure tight against the ledger flashing that I have against the wall. And then I'll pull this all the way out to what my plan say should be the edge or that front edge of the front rim joist. It's gonna be right at 14 feet. I also have a two foot cantilever, which is gonna be measured from the front edge of the beam to the front of that front rim joist. Also, it's important to note that a two foot cantilever is gonna be the maximum allowable in this jurisdiction when we're using a two by eight. It's always okay to go under that measurement, we just can't go over the two feet. So again, our plans dictate or say that we'll be at 14 feet. Since we can go under, we might be changing that depending on how many full deck boards we can use on the deck. To determine that, it's pretty easy. Let's get into the phone here, go to my calculator, and then I have 14 feet to get that into inches. I'll just multiply that by 12. Now I have 168 inches. To divide that up into the number of deck boards that I'll have, I'll take the width of a deck board, which will be roughly five and a half inches, add that gap that I'll need between each of my deck boards, which will be roughly a quarter, 
that'll give me five and three quarter inches. So if I divide that by 5.75, that'll give me 29.21 deck boards. So I'll have 29 full deck boards, and then I'll end up with a partial deck board at the end. So since I really don't want that, I'm actually gonna round down to 29, because again, it is okay to go in from that two feet cantilever, just can't go over. So even though this makes the distance from the house a little bit shorter, that's no problem. So now I've got 29 deck boards times that same measurement of the width of the deck board plus that gap, which would be 5.75. And that gives me 166 and three quarter inches. Okay, so let's make a mark at that measurement, 166, three quarter. And since I know that that's to the outside edge of my frame, I'm gonna have to subtract the thickness of that material, which is gonna be an inch and a half. That'll give me room for my front rim joist. So I need to make a mark at 165 and a quarter. From here, I'll do the same thing on my other rim joist. I'll put a mark right at 165 and a quarter. So you might be wondering why I'm marking and cutting all of my joists here in position instead of just doing it before and bringing them over already cut. Well, the main reason is I can't trust that wall of the house to be perfectly straight. And if there is any waviness in the wall, it's gonna be transferred and extend out to all of these joists. So what you would see is a really wavy front rim joist. So instead, I'm gonna mark my other rim joist here. I'll make a chalk line all the way down and cut them all in position. That way I know I'll have a straight line. So when I install that front rim joist, it'll be straight as well. We have our chalk line. Now we're ready to start cutting off the ends of our joist. So what I would typically do, I'll just come in using my speed square as a guide and I would cut all these joists vertically all the way down. I wanna show you a way that I think is gonna be a little more DIY friendly and it should help you be a little more accurate. So what we're gonna do in this case, we'll do the same process, but we're gonna start at the top of our joist. I'm just gonna line this up here with our blade on the outside of that line. Again, using the shoe of your saw, resting up against that square to keep you straight. So we'll make that cut on the top and that'll give you well, whatever the depth of your blade is, it'll give you a starting point to make that vertical cut, and you'll be able to follow that all the way through. Okay, a couple other things to mention here. Safety is a key concern when you're on a work site at any time, but especially when you're handling a tool like a circular saw. So in this case, I've made sure to minimize the depth of my blade to just over the thickness of my material, so I don't have a lot of exposed blade coming through the side. The other thing is that as I'm cutting, really important to stay to the side. Again, I don't want to be right behind a spinning blade. I'm going to go ahead and make this first cut. The other thing is that as I'm cutting, really important to stay to the side. Again, I don't want to be right behind a spinning blade. Now we're ready to install this front rim joist. You can see I've actually got a couple scraps of two by four just connected on the underside of these joists acting as a helping hand. Now I'm gonna make sure that my front rim joist is flush with the rim joist here. Looks good. And I'll just clamp it in place. Okay. I've also marked the locations for all of my fasteners. Same thing we did on our ledger board. Except in this case, when we're connecting that front rim joist to our joist, we're gonna be using two links of fasteners. So anytime that we have a post in the middle of two of our joists as we have here, or a joist on either side of that post, we'll be using our eight inch SCWS timber screws. And you can see it'll look just like that. But for all the other joists that don't have a guardrail post in between them, we're just using those five inch fasteners. Got one of those here as well. And that'll look just like that. From this point, I'm ready to attach the front rim joist to those joists. I'm gonna start with this front corner, which does have a guardrail post. So when I'm putting in a fastener this long into a material that's only an inch and a half thick, I need to make sure that I pre-drill first. Okay, so we've got that front rim joist installed. And now we're gonna come back to that splice, which you probably remember we talked about the splice a little bit earlier in our ledger. 
and that transferred out into that front rim joist. So we purposely put that right in the middle of a bay, or pretty close to the middle anyway. And the main purpose was that, as opposed to putting it on a joist, is number one, we couldn't have fit four fasteners into that inch and a half material. So that wouldn't have even been possible. But also now we know that we're not hitting any of our guardrail posts. And also as all of this material starts to dry up, it's actually gonna contract. So we need to have a space like this where it has room to do that. So what we're gonna do instead, is we're gonna install this blocking between those joists and tie this all together using those three inch structural screws. We'll have two on either side of this joist right here. And then we're also gonna secure it on the back using two on the back side of this joist and two right here. So all together, we'll be using eight of those three inch structural screws. Okay, so we've got all of our joists installed. The last thing that I'm doing is checking for the evenness of the top of my joist. So I've been working all the way down. I've just got a couple more joists left. And you can actually see that as I rested on top of this joist right here, that level is rocking back and forth. So that's telling me that this joist is sticking up just a little bit. Even though right here, all of these joists are laying on top of that beam, you still might run into something like this. Again, easy problem to fix. I'm just taking this level, checking for all those spots, making an X anywhere that I want to plane that down. And then after I plane this down, my hand planer, I should have a nice even surface all the way across the deck frame. In our next video, we're going to be covering guardrail post installation. And if you'd like to see that video and a whole lot more covering the entire deck building process, you can go to trex.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching.